Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm doing an unboxing of Age of Comics, The Golden Years from Lirius Games. This is designed by Giacomo Semini, Sonia Gonzalez, and the art is by Laura Gugliamo, and I'm probably mispronouncing all of those, and if so, I'm terribly, terribly sorry. So this is a, uh, I believe, a uh, work placement Euro type game. It uh, plays one to four. Let me confirm that here. Yeah, one to four players, 14 and up. And it's obviously set during the golden age of comics back in the 1940s or so. So anyway, uh, this is a very interesting theme. I don't think I've seen this done. We have, we've had comic games where you're playing the superheroes and things like that. But this is actually one where you're, um, you know, doing the publishing. So anyway, let's dig in, see what you get in the box. So I want to point out this is the, the retail, the base version. There is a deluxe version that comes in a sleeve. Um, you know, a box sleeve has some extra components in it, but this is the one you could buy uh, in the stores. So I like the artwork on the front. Very cool. Obviously looks like a comic. It's a, it's, it's very meta. It's a comic art of comic book publishers. So uh, very neat. There was something I was going, I had seen. Oh, I just, I like, I just like the typewriter on there. Typewriter is like a uh, laptop computer, sort of, like an old computer where the paper is the monitor. So, for those of you who are very young. All right, big box. And stuff is piling out, out of the box, but that's probably because the punch boards have lifted it up. So, we will see. So, we start out, we have the Age of Comics rule book. It is 12 pages. Um, Unfortunately, because the box is about a 12 by 12 box, they made the manual 12 by 12 as well. You know, that just never sits, sits well because as you're trying to read it, you know, it's flopping around and, you know, unwieldy. It'd be nice if they would make this, especially this has been really great in comic book size, you know, about normal, normal width. But anyway, that's just my opinion. So it starts out telling you what the components are. Object of the game is full color, lots of graphics. I mean, lots of you know, visuals, it's not a very rules dense game. Explains how everything is set up. Very cool. And there you go. So that's the rule book, 12 pages, not too bad. And then this includes some mini expansions here. We've got public enemy number one, special sales order tiles. And that's it for the that sheet. And then we've got notes on the solo mode designed by Nestori Mangoni. Again, apologize if I've mispronounced that. It says you must know the rules of the two to four player base game to be able to play the solo mode. And it can, includes Automa cards, an Automa mat, and you choose a regular player mat of your choice. So this is a one page, also uh, four pages. Seemed like it was a little thin, but there you go. Four page rules for the Automa. And let's check and see here. At the end of the solo game, you will make two separate performance assessments. The challenge against the Automa, the player title, challenge against yourself. You win the game if you earn more victory points than the Automa. So that's, that's great. It's not a beat your own score, it is beat the Automa, which is always the best way to do it. Uh, and then you get a title based on how many points you scored. Cool. So if you hurry, you, know, you do well. All right, so now we got some punch boards here. Like I said, they're kind of lifting things up a little bit. We got four punch boards. So the first one, we've got some fans. We've got money. We've got some, just some star tokens, maybe victory point tokens there. And then various denominations of currency. Looks like some art points, calendars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these may be special because on the back they've got different. So maybe that's the theme a romance comic, a horror comic, and a mystery detective kind of comic. Just guessing here, obviously. So 
There's punch board one. And punch board two, we have some more of the symbols. The gun and the heartbreak. Superhero, Western, horror, science fiction, more money. And then there's the other three. So I guess if you have to randomly draw themes, maybe you do that. All right, and then we've got this sheet of tokens here. And this one has some large, kind of like bookmark counters. We've got superhero, that's probably one for each of the genres. They're very thick, very nice quality uh, counters. And then we've got, let's see, we've got some transport tickets on the New York City transport system. We've got some color for, uh, I guess, colorists for the comics, maybe. And then some more of the uh, genre markers. And then we've got our comics. These are probably the ones you're going to design, right? And they actually, it's, it's really cool. So they're color coordinated. So we've got blue for superhero and then we've got some blue comics here, but they're unique, which is very nice. So there's probably a lot of good reading in, on those, at least the covers that you see. And then on the back, it shows that you gain some fans, gain some money. So as you cash those in perhaps, so that's pretty cool. Or if you complete it, you get those. Again, just guessing. Until I play it, I will not know. So again, the other set for the genres, some more tickets, some more draw tokens, and then more comics for the different genres. Very cool. Nice, 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 nice. I'm looking forward to playing this. This seems really neat. I don't, I'm not, not too big on the superhero uh, game genre. Um, I think uh, uh, Legendary Marvel does it best, but even that gets a little weird. So this is nice to play from the other side, just the publishing side. So, all right, we've got a game board. We'll take a look at that in a minute. We have, uh, I assume these are your player boards, perhaps. We'll see if we have four of them. And we do, yep. So you got a nice yellow, we got a nice salmon, we got a nice teal, and it's kind of a brown, kind of burgundy color there. And so again, we opened up a minute ago, we'll look at them again in more detail here. So basically just a spot for cards, literally looks like a token, uh, uh, a cube, we'll go across that maybe. And then, on the back, the f oh, for solo mode, uh, you got turn order. So I don't know if this is for the Automa to use or if this is for you to use when you're playing in solo mode. Again, find out when you read the rules. Just check. Yeah, they're all, they all have solo mode on the back, so I'm assuming this is what the Automa is going to use, and there's just available ones for depending on which color you pick. All right, so we've got a bag of bags or a roll of bags to help store your components. But then you've also got this nice tray to put components in as well. And then we've got a score pad, quite a few sheets on there, probably 50 or so. And we got some cards. Let's see, so we got comic cards, obviously. Looks like we've got some, uh, well, okay, so we got some French uh, instruction cards. Let's see if those, we'll look at those in a minute. Let's see if this gives us, let's see if this gives us English and French. Uh, no, it says, dear player, these are corrections. We found minor typos on the two French overview cards enclosed. Please find the corrected replacements. And that says that in French, but I couldn't read that. So. There we go. So if you have the French version or if you're playing using the French components, you'll get some replacement cards there. So that's neat that they've found it out in time to go ahead and ship that. And we got some more uh, cards here and cards here and cards here. We'll take a look at those in just a second. And then we've got some 
wooden bits. These are obviously in the player colors. So this has the player colors and the players have a symbol, I assume, to help with uh, those who are visually impaired colorblindness to help you be able to recognize it. I notice the boards have that same symbol on them. And then we've got various, I guess, workers. It's kind of nice. They're, they're meeple pawns without having the arms and legs and stuff, but uh, they're also color coordinated and do have the symbol on them as well. So that's a neat, neat touch, thinking of everyone. And then we've got these buildings. You can see the building there. And again, one in each color. This is your publishing house, I would assume. Oh, but there's more. And then we have our cubes for tracking across the top of your board, I believe, where you're taking your actions. Again, three, uh, looks like three in each color. So a lot of wooden bits. We'll look at these cards next. Okay, so looking at the cards here, we went through all three decks and then sorted them out because there was a mixture. So you actually have um, the reference cards. We have the uh, corrections in French, but they also have them apparently in Italian. They've got the, uh, let's see, the French, looks like. we got Spanish, perhaps. I think so. And then English. And then German. So you get, a, you get the uh, reference cards in many different languages. So that is, that is pretty cool. So it looks like it uses a lot of symbology, so you don't really have to, to be able to read English to play the game. Then we've got the aforementioned Automa cards and the instructions for what the Automa is going to do. See, so they've got different, different commands and different orders and then different symbols to help you do. I assume tiebreakers or pick a, pick a genre, things like that. So that's pretty cool. So we have a deck of Automa cards. And then we've got these cards, which have the different genres on the back, and then have various minus two fans, plus one fan, minus two fans, plus one fan. So, um, and then some of them are the comic books that were on the uh, tokens that we saw earlier. So Killer Dames, Call the Police, It's a Felony, True Stories of Crime. So you can read these bigger. Haunting Tales, All New Stories, True Terror. So you get through the ones that are actually the comics, and the artwork is really cool in those. So they got somebody, the, the artist, evoked that golden age of comic design very well. And then we have those, and then you have these also that have the, the uh, genre on the back but then they also have this minus two fans uh plus one fan so i don't know if these get shuffled in and these are you know you're drawing for them and they're a bonus or a penalty but those are all the ones with those backs and then we have some more cards here that also have the comic covers on them and you hear they see these appear a little more black and white or monotone i should say those they have that back and then we have these other cards which I guess are action cards roll cards so and they have this back they have one two and three on them so you've got an artist Sandra Pepper St. Lanes Eleanor Herrero so you got the different artists that you can hire to work on your comics and then writers. And they all have different names, which is really cool. And what's our last one? Nope, just artists and writers. Let's get the artists and writers cards. And then you do have this, like I mentioned before, you've got this deep well um, organizer that comes in it. So you got a place to hold the cards. Um, it looks like it's built to hold sleeved cards because there's a big enough gap here to hold the sleeve cards, room below to hold some counters, counters here, counters here, counters here, counters here, and you can put them in the bags. All right, so as promised, here's the game board. 
Uh, it is a six panel board. It measures, it's hard to tell how big each of those panels are because they're not a standard size, but we'll just take a look. It's about, I'd say it's about 27 inches by 15 inches. Very nicely colored. Um, got your turn order, your game calendar here. I assume it goes over five rounds or six rounds. Um, you got two rounds in round three, however you want to look at it. You got a, a track here for each, a money track for each uh, the player colors. And then you've got a section here for hiring, developing, ideas, uh, printing, royalties, sales, and a map of Manhattan. Are you gonna move around and do things? Very nice. I like I like the, I like how the theme has gone through, and it does very much feel like I'm reading a comic book. Now I wasn't around during the Golden Age, but it was carrying over in the in the '70s when I was reading my Peter Parker and uh, Richie Rich and all those good comics, and so it just feels you know kind of vintagey like that. So I like the modern glossy comics that you see today. So anyway, gonna put this back in the box and show you everything that, and recap everything that you get. So if you pick up a retail copy of Age of Comics, The Golden Years, you're going to get all those different cards that we looked at. You are going to get those reference cards in various languages. You're going to get all these nice wooden bits. You're going to get the corrected French errata cards over there keep them separate you are going to get the score pad you're going to get the bag of bags you're going to get the four player boards that game board that we took a look at the four sheets of counters and once you punch them they won't raise the box but you get the four sheets of counters you're going to get the solo mode instruction book, four pages for that, the one page for the mini expansions, and the 12 page full size rule book. And that is everything coming in. Age of Comics, the golden years from Lyrius Games. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh!